Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Viking 5 series refrigeration training. I'm Margaret McSweeney, your moderator for today. And before we begin the training, I would first like to go over some housekeeping items and then some introductions. Please remain on mute during the call. If you have questions, please utilize the chat function to ask questions during the training. All questions will be answered at the end of the training presentation. For your information, we will be recording this training session. First of all, I would like to introduce Sue Bailey, who is the Director of Go-To Market Strategy at Viking Range. Also, Nicole Cooper. She is the showroom manager of Middleby Residential's Irvine Showroom. Chef Jackie Rath Rathong, who is the executive chef and brand ambassador of Middleby Residential's New York Showroom. And also Chef Jamie Larita. He is the executive chef and brand ambassador from Middleby Residential's Chicago Showroom. And welcome everyone to another Viking training. These things have been pretty fun. I really enjoy doing them and I love that you guys are participating in them. So today we're going to be talking about Viking Refrigeration, 5 Series Refrigeration. And I have to say that I'm a huge fan of the 5 Series collection, always have been, and it's our workhorse. I kind of think of myself as a workhorse as well. But today we're going to be focusing on refrigeration and keeping things chilly and cold. Um, today we're going to be using a recipe by Chef Jackie, um, that's our New York chef, and I'm going to be using one of her recipes and the five series refrigeration. So, that said, today we're going to be making an incredibly good sangria, something very different, and we're going to be using lots of chilled ingredients. The main thing about this recipe is that always start with cold ingredients, especially if you're going to serve it right away. So in my five series behind me, I've got all my ingredients nice and chilled. And the sangria is made with sparkling rosé. A little bit of brandy. Here's my sparkling rosé, a little bit of brandy. Even chilling my simple syrup, which I made fresh on my Viking five series range, and some uh, seltzer water. Now, the great thing about this recipe is you don't need ice. So in my Viking 5 Series freezer, I've got the grapes, two kinds, already frozen. So as we start the recipe, very, very simple, we're gonna start with some of those frozen grapes. Now, guys, let's face it. The real reason why this is a good idea is that you don't have ice cubes in this, which only means more alcohol. Now, if you're that kind of person and you really enjoy a nice cocktail, the grapes frozen are gonna actually keep the drink cold. So I've got frozen grapes. I layered them with orange slices, lime slices, lemon slices, peaches, and then I'm gonna to top them off with a little bit more grape action, frozen grape action. You can already see by the jar how frozen those grapes are, and I only put them in when I got into the showroom 30 minutes ago. So to that, I'm going to start with my simple syrup. Now this recipe is something so easy, you can make it home. And I know simple syrup, well it says it right there in the explanation. It's pretty simple. So Jackie calls for three tablespoons, I think. She's got the recipe, you guys are getting it, but I'm going to kind of tweak it to my liking. So this is actually going to make it a little sweeter. And then the brandy, I use a nice French brandy. I throw in a little splash of that. Then I top it off with my sparkling rosé. Just that alone is just a beautiful presentation, the way that foams up around the um, frozen grapes. Just like so. Looking really, really good. And then I water it down just a little bit and stir it up with a little bit of salsa water on the top. I might float a little bit of brandy on the top. As a matter of fact, I'm going to, why not? 
and then give it a stir. Now Jackie's recipe calls for basil, and I think that's a great idea, but I had a ginormous amount of fresh mint in my garden at home, and I brought it in, and I'm actually gonna use mint instead. Could I use both? Absolutely. So here's the way you'd see it sitting nicely on your deck. Now remember, that's ice cold because of our Viking 5 Series refrigeration and freezer, and the glasses are cold, and the, uh, the concoction there is cold, and we're ready to go. So there's your cocktail. Enjoy it for the summer coming up. And I'm gonna throw this over to Sue as we're gonna explain the workhorse in the back, the five series refrigerator. Thank you, Jamie. It's good to um, have all you guys on the training with us today. Um, I do wanna say, as you guys know, I can cook and choose not to, but I will certainly use this recipe, Jamie and Jackie. Um, <laughs> Possibly as soon as we get off this call. Yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to have. So we are going to talk about five series refrigeration. I was telling Jessica and Jamie and the rest of the team that as much as I loved the last week's presentation that we did talking about the surface cooking, this is probably my second favorite. I absolutely love our five series refrigeration. Um, for those of you guys that have been with me for a while, um, not calling anybody's names or calling you old, Vince and Jack and you know, some of you guys have been with me for a while. You'll remember when Viking started uh, building five series refrigeration in Greenwood. It was in 2000, the year 2000, August of 2000 to be exact. So guys, we are almost exactly 20 years since we produced the first um, built-in refrigeration in Greenwood. Those of you that have been with me for a while, remember, Amana made those refrigerators for us before that. They decided they were not gonna do built-ins anymore. We did buy all the tooling from Amana, but let's be real clear on this. Um, we have changed every aspect of that refrigerator in the last 20 years, okay? So um, it has been a lot of engineering, it's been a lot of changes, and we are very proud of what we make today in the five series. We're gonna talk for a few minutes with Jamie and Jackie for just a second about food preservation, okay? Here in the US, we are very spoiled um, because we go to the grocery store once a week, how off, however often we think about it, and we just expect our refrigerator to preserve our food. If you think about it, I actually went ahead and looked up the definition of food preservation and what the refrigerator meant to that. And it means that the refrigerator preserves food by slowing down the growth and reproduction of microorganisms and the action of enzymes that cause the food to rot. Well, that's a good definition of we don't want our food to rot. Jamie and Jackie, you guys want to talk a little bit about how and why that's so important from a chefs or just a food standpoint? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I mean, whenever we're working in the showrooms, we're always trying to, we're always buying the best ingredients. We're going to farmer's markets. We're buying things that we want to preserve as long as we can. And also, we never know who's coming into the showroom sometimes, so we want to be able to prepare things on the fly. So, you know, say I have something that's been in the fridge for a week or six days, the fact that it's still okay and I'm capable and I'm able to use it is definitely um, an asset to have in our showrooms. Um, and also, I don't know if we want to talk about the avocado now or not, Sue, do we? Let's, let's we'll hold on the avocado. Yeah, well, let's hold okay, on the good. avocado until I get to plastic. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> JB, you want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, food preservation for me is everything, especially today, Sue, like in the farmer's market. If I'm going to a farmer's market and I'm actually spending the money and you all know how much it costs to go to a farmer's market and buy fresh produce, I know that with that kind of preservation, and I love talking to customers in the showroom about that, it's a great example. Let's say you buy, I don't know, bib lettuce. In three or four days, if you don't use it, it's gonna to start to get sad and wilt away. But in this kind of refrigeration, um, I like to say that everything that's causing food to decompose, we're stripping out of the refrigerator. So it's lasting um, a lot longer than normal. I think it's extremely important today, especially these days, going to the market and coming home, you know, it's not that we're going that, that much, you right. know, we try to not go as much. So I think that's a really good point in selling this product today, Sue. So. Excellent. Some of the things I want to focus on to start with, guys, are not your typical, you know, shelves and lighting and those sort of things. We are going to talk about those, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, how it functions and, and the things that we have found important. First thing I want to talk about, and it's nothing you guys can see, so you just get to look at the pretty refrigerator for now, is that variable speed DC compressor. We talked about the compressor, if you guys were on the seven series refrigerator call. Um, it's, you know, most other manufacturers use a single speed AC compressor. We do use the, um, the variable speed DC compressor. 
Uh, we do it because it is the best compressor out there. Remember me saying before, it's by Embraco. Um, you know, here's what you have to realize. Embraco builds about 60 million compressors a year. And that company has over 1,200 patents on their product. So they are very much a technological company. They look very much towards innovation. And it's not like we're using the exact same compressor we started with 20 years ago. As they have improved their compressors, we've, we've taken advantage of that and we use different ones. But ours is, remember, variable speed DC compressor. The other thing I want to talk about first, and Jessica's going to pull the slide up for me, is I want to talk a little bit about the airflow that happens in a five series refrigerator. Good job, Jessica. Um, so let me give you just a little bit of history before we, we do anything here. We use a single compressor in all the five series refrigerators, okay? So what you get is you get those other brands who say, oh, without two compressors, you're going to be transferring odors. You know, it, it doesn't have enough humidity, all these things. So I want to I clarify for you guys how the air flows, how we do not transfer odor, and why we believe that this is the best way to build a refrigerator. All right, so as we start, first one for me, Jessica. The compressor, here's what you have to remember, controls the freezer, okay? And I only say the freezer side of the unit. This is easier to visualize in a side-by-side. -side. It also works the same way in a bottom freezer, okay? So the compressor controls the freezer side. If the freezer side needs to get colder, the compressor comes on, and then it will circulate the air within that area. So Jessica, if you'll kind of show us that. And then, yep, so we're gonna circulate it in there, all right? So stays nice and cold, all right? So now, if the refrigerator needs to change temperature, where do we get that from? We get it from the cold air in the freezer, all right? So we're gonna pull it, you can kind of see at the back, we're gonna pull it over into the refrigerator. We're going to circulate the cold air in the refrigerator, okay? So at this point, this is where competition says, that we are going to transfer odors, okay? Because we're moving food from the freezer into the refrigerator, and then we're going to move it back into the freezer, okay? Here is why we do not, do not transfer food odors. So let's say you've got some salmon or onions or something else sitting in your refrigerator, okay? And so what we do, if you are an odor, you travel in the form of a water molecule, okay? That's the first bit of science that you have to learn here. So if I'm an odor, I'm a water molecule. So I am circulating in the refrigerator, then I go over to the freezer, and in theory, this is what our competition says, those water molecules move into the freezer, and now your ice is going to taste like onions. Well, not the case, guys, because, next little part for me, please, Jessica, because what happens is before the air goes into the freezer, it has to pass across the evaporator coil, okay? For those of you that have been training with me for a while, you all know this the evaporator coil is sitting at negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? If I am a water molecule and I pass across a negative 17 degree Fahrenheit surface, what happens to me? I freeze. So all of those water molecules are freezing there, all right? So what goes back into the freezer is clean air. So what we're actually doing is we're actually scrubbing the air of odors and additional humidity and those sort of things as we're doing this flow. Now, I will agree there are some competitors that have higher humidity than we do, but let's think about this for just a minute, guys. How much of the food in your refrigerator actually needs a lot of humidity? Mine, you know, of course it's nothing because I eat almost nothing green, but you know that your food needs humidity if when you go and reach for it at the grocery store, your arm gets wet from the sprayer. So now think about how much food you really have. It's usually, the two drawers full, which is the humidity drawers. So we love the fact that we don't have an excessive amount of humidity, which is bad for some foods. We are not transferring odor and we're doing it all with a single compressor. So that's one of the most important things. Thank you for that, Jessica. I think we're done with that slide. The next thing I wanna talk about is, and again, here we're, we're technical, nothing really to look at, um, the super clog resistant condenser coil, okay? Guys, compressors are less than 1% of a service incident rate in any refrigerators. That's not usually the issue. The issue comes in with the condenser coil, okay? So the condenser coil is sitting up top. Um, it's what helps the compressor to work. What happens if, if anything shuts the refrigerator down, makes it stop working, it's because the condenser coil needs to be cleaned. 
Okay, so let's think about this, guys. We are all in the appliance industry, obviously, right? So luckily I can't see you, but if I could, how many of you would raise your hands to say that you have cleaned your refrigerator's condenser coil within the last year? I did, I saw two hands go up, that's it. So nobody, nobody does it, right? The thing with the Viking 5 Series, it is a maintenance free, you never have to clean it condenser coil, okay? That is really big, because you think about it. A, customer's probably not gonna clean it to start with, all right? So then they run the risk of their compressor not having as long a life as it should. With this, and we came upon this, guys, kind of by accident. So about 10 years ago, we were doing some engineering things on the refrigerator. Liston Durden, you guys, some of you will remember Liston. He'd had a five series refrigerator in his house for a couple years. Um, and every time Liston was by the book, had to clean his condenser coil every six months. What he noticed was there was never anything to clean on his condenser coil. And Liston is one of those people that had cats and dogs galore, okay? There was lots of pet hair. There was lots of things going on. We kept an eye on his refrigerator legitimately for over seven years, never had to clean that condenser coil because we use a tube and wire condenser coil which is different than a fin and tube which is what most people use and it's got a lot more air that flows through it so you don't get it to clog up so your customer a doesn't have to worry about cleaning it b it's not going to be a service call to get some you know servicer to come out and clean it for you so you don't void your warranty i thought it was interesting i did go to a competitor's use and care manual and it's got in big bold letters to avoid damaging condenser fins vacuum in the direction of the fins and failure to clean the condenser could result in temperature loss, mechanical failure, or damage of the unit, okay? We never have to worry about that. So for me, that's a great, great feature to have um, in the refrigerator. All right, I spent half our time talking about condenser coils, airflow, and compressors. So let's get to some of the fun stuff um, from that standpoint. I wanna start with electronic controls, Jamie. So I'm gonna start up top at the electronic controls. One of the other things that I love about the Pro Tilt Chill temperature management system we have is we keep the temperature within either compartment to within one degree Fahrenheit. Okay, guys. So doesn't seem as important in a refrigerator, but in a freezer, it is extremely important. For any of you that don't have a Viking refrigerator, um, let's say you put your ice cream in there or you put your meat in there, and over a short period of time, maybe a week or so, you notice ice crystals forming on your frozen food. Ice crystals form because the temperature in the, in the freezer is not kept at a swing of less than one degree Fahrenheit. So what happens is when it goes through the defrost, it slightly melts and then when it freezes again, that's where the ice crystals come in, okay? So we keep ours to within one degree Fahrenheit, even in the freezer as we're working through that. All right, a couple things up there as we're looking at it. Let's talk about some of those features you can talk about with the customer. Fast cool. So one of those buttons up there, I believe is a fast cool. There it is, thank you, Jamie. This is gonna run the compressor at high speed for two hours, okay? To cool the refrigerator as quickly as possible. You're gonna use a fast cool if you just come home from the grocery store, it's hot outside, you know, we get 90 degree temperature, 90% humidity here. I need, I need some extra cooling going on. You hit the fast cool. The thing I love about the fast cools in the max fridge and freezers is I never have to remember to go back and change my temperature. It goes back automatically to whatever I had it set at. So that's the fast cool. The max refrigerator does a very similar something, adjusts to the refrigerator temperature to the coldest setting for four hours, okay? So it's double as long. So you're uh, gonna have a party. Um, Jamie's gonna have people over and he needs to get everything in there and nice and cool. So he can use the max refrigerator. He doesn't have to worry that in the morning he's gonna wake up and everything's gonna be frozen because he didn't switch it back to a higher temperature. Same thing with max freezer, guys. It adjusts the freezer temperature to the lowest setting for six hours and then it'll go back to its previous setting. I think I mentioned this in the seven series, guys, but I like to mention it again. Max freezer for me is important because if you guys were to go into the grocery and you were to look and, and at the frozen foods, pay attention. If anything says it's flash frozen, quick frozen, anything like that, you're gonna pay a little bit more because the faster you take food to a frozen state, the fresher it stays, 
okay? So if I know I'm gonna be putting meat or something into my freezer, I want it to freeze quickly. I use the max freezer because I wanna bring it down to temperature as quickly as I can. There's a door open alarm. Any of you have teenagers? Goodness gracious, they can stand in front of a, a refrigerator and just stand there for days. Door open alarm will let you know when that door has been open for a period of time, shut it and the alarm goes off. Sabbath mode, there is a Sabbath mode for our um, Jewish friends that need it. The Sabbath mode will disable the lights and the alarms. Uh, the one thing you do have to do is remember to raise the bail arm on the ice maker because that's not an automatic something because you don't want the ice maker making ice during the Sabbath. Um, so we do need to remember to do that. So those are some quick controls um, from that standpoint. I want to go on now and talk about um, the plasma cluster. Uh, it is a great feature of the refrigerator. Thank you, Jamie. You see it right there. Jessica, you've got a slide for me, I think, to talk about the plasma cluster with. So we're gonna switch to that slide real quick. Thank you. Good. All right, so here's what it is. Plasma cluster is a patented um, filtration system from Sharp, okay? We spend a lot of time with Sharp. We are the only manufacturer that actually uses it in a residential refrigerator at this point. It Basically what it does, you see it here, generates ions to eliminate bacteria, viruses, and mold spores, okay? Next one, Jess. The lab tests show that it inactivates 99% of viruses in a 140 square foot room in only two hours, okay? Look at that, 99% of viruses in a 140 square foot room in two hours. So the small amount of space that we have in the refrigerator, it is taking care of all of those things very effectively in there. Now the thing to remember is plasma cluster is not a filter. Blue zone is such a great thing. You guys know we have it in our seven series. It does a lot of what the plasma cluster does. Remember, blue zone gets rid of ethylene gas, the plasma cluster does not. That's your two biggest differences when you're looking at those. Both of them remove odor. And remember, this combined with the fact that we flow that air and we clean that air, you will almost never find an odor in your five series refrigerator at all. It enhances the food preservation. And we're gonna talk about that just a little bit more in just a few seconds. It's my next one. Oh. It's quite efficient and effective. Guys, it is in, the plasma cluster is always placed in the airflow, okay? So we've had people say before, hey, is there a light? How do I know it's working? If the fan is on, the plasma cluster is working, okay? So when you open the door, the fan goes off, that's the only time the plasma cluster is not working, okay? So no filter to change, it is good for the lifetime of the product. All right, now, Jessica. Oh, again, no, no filters to clean. The next part of the slide is kind of shows you an idea of what happens with the plasma cluster. Okay. The plasma cluster discharges and generates positive and negative ions. Okay. And they actually alternate at a high frequency. Okay. So then what's going to happen is you can kind of see here, the cluster ions collide with the harmful bacteria, our viruses, odor causing molecules, and then they extract the hydrogen molecule from it and deactivate them. Okay, for me, that was just way more than my brain can usually take, but here's what I know. It's scientific. It works well. Sharp has got room um, air purifiers. This is used in medical. It's used in some cars. It is a great way to actually remove those things. Uh, Jess, you can take me off there, Jessica. Thank you. Uh, Jackie and Jamie, I think you both have some real good stories about the food preservation in our products. Yes. It, we sure do, and I'm gonna let Jackie tell her avocado story, finally. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I've been hanging on to this avocado story for about two years now. Um, so when I first was hired, you know, just in general, I always question things. As a chef, I wanna, you know, challenge people and I want them to challenge me back. So one of the things I was told was that an avocado would last in our five series refrigerator uncovered for up to five days with no mold or any sort of discoloration. It wouldn't pick up any flavors, et cetera. And I was just like, mm, absolutely not. That's not true. So me and the girls in the New York City showroom decided to test it out because we wanted to prove everybody wrong that the refrigerator is not as good as they say it is. Well, unfortunately, I was proven wrong. Or should I say fortunately for everybody fortunately. who had <laughs> in the refrigerator, um, I was proven wrong. And on day four, I took it out and there was not a black spot on the uncovered avocado, which I was shocked because... I don't have a Viking refrigerator in my personal house and 
I try to do that all the time and I usually end up having to throw out my avocado. So the fact that it didn't pick up any other odors from any of the other food in the fridge and it was still edible, it was just blew my mind. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great story and I never have done the avocado test myself, but I do remember vividly Guys, um, we do so many events, and as you know, you've come into the showroom before. We're very event-centric. And one day, we had um, someone deliver a bunch of cheese platters to our showroom, and they weren't really up to my standards as far as like what I wanted to see. So quickly, during an event, I shoved them into the 5 Series refrigerator um, just to get them out of the way. Now, it was a very busy week. And um, I, I had forgotten about the cheese display and it was over the weekend. And then I came back in on um, Tuesday, Monday was a day off and Tuesday I came into the showroom and I was showing a customer the five series refrigerator, open it up, lo and behold, it's loaded with cheese. It didn't even smell. The cheese didn't even look at all like it had been, um, you know, sometimes when cheese gets hard and weird and then the edges get like discolored, yeah. it really yeah. did look perfect. So that really spoke to me when I was first coming into the show as to how powerful these things are. And one more thing I want to add, every time I open up the five series refrigerator, especially the one on the back, it smells like fresh fallen snow. And I, I bring customers over there to show them just how great the, the air smells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Excellent. Couple things, because I um, imagine I ran out of time. Um, it, a couple things to remember. This also has the um, spill proof glass shell, like we talked about for the seven series. The ones that have the actual drawers, those are also spill proof. The ones that are not drawers are the nano shelving technology. So all of the drawers are spill proof. You have soft close, thank you, Jamie, on all the drawers, the daily drawers and the humidity drawers. So nice and easy to do that. One of the other things I love about the five series is our patented metal door bins. All right, if you guys, and there is a space for a pizza box. Thank you, Jamie. The, the metal door bins, the warmest place in the refrigerator is the door. So what we do is these are patented guys. We spend a lot of time getting these just right. And these are metal, not plastic. So if you do nothing else, take one of these out, show it, let your customer feel it. Cause it really is um, indicating how, how robust these actually are. So I love those. And the fact they're metal, they keep the food that's in the door than it would be normally. Oh, and I gotta mention the dairy depart compartments. I love the dairy compartments. Guys, I love butter, okay? And I like my stick of butter. I like it at a softer temperature. So I can put it in the dairy, un uncovered, close it, and that keeps the cold air out so it's easier for my butter to spread. So I do love to keep my butter there. Smelly cheeses, another good place to put them up there out of the way in the dairy compartment from that standpoint. So that's just a few of the great um, features that we have. Jamie, I think we want to talk a little bit about the different designs and options, right? Sure, absolutely. You guys notice I have two of these over here, right? Oh, look, um, they look great. Me and the cameraman, get it? Um, so uh, <laughs> yes, as far as design is concerned, I always really gravitate when it comes to Viking and our refrigeration now and when people are building that luxury kitchen. The design of a Viking 5 Series refrigerator is second to none. I mean, look at the black right here and how we have this like really, you know, it's it's proud, but it's really looks like it's very integrated there, Sue. And, yeah, so uh, this one, uh, excuse me, this one we use the flush side trim kit that you can buy as an accessory, um, replace the pro one. So you just made it look clean. You decided you wanted it to stick out just a little bit. Um, Nicole has one that's totally flush. So you've got a lot of options as far as whether you have it proud or flush, right, Jamie? Yes, for sure. And that's the great thing about the five series. You have a lot of versatility. Um, do we want to go to Nicole in California so we could see another beautiful vignette? Absolutely. Hello, Nicole. How are you? You want to turn the camera off of you onto the... There we go, sorry. I was trying to get the audio there. Yeah, there we go. Well, almost. There we go, thank you. I love seeing you though, you're so pretty. So this is a great, great. Jamie, you wanna talk a little bit about what you did sure. here? Yes, of course. So this is a um, panel ready bottom freezer unit. Um, you see how great that cabinet, uh, the cabinet panels look here and how it was installed flush uh, with the cabinets there for a super clean look. 
I think that's my favorite look in the five series that I've done in any showroom. So what do you think about that? Oh, it's beautiful. So guys, if you, if you order one that has a stainless or a colored panel, it comes with the pro side trends that are going to stand proud. If you order a full overlay, it comes with the flush trim sides because that's what we assume you're going to want to do is probably flush it up a little bit more. So they do ship with two different side trims. Perfect. That's a great shot of that right there, Nicole. And so, but if you wanted to install a paneled one flush trim, you just order the accessory trim kit. So great, great point there. Yeah, that's perfect. Excellent. And then, and then Sue, as we close that refrigerator, uh, thank you, Nicole. I love seeing the California showroom. I can't wait for you guys to get in and just pull back on that design right there. Love that cabinetry by Woodland. And then you'll see the panel, the, the uh, grate on top. Um, if you can go to the top of that refrigerator right there. Um, there yeah, you see, oh, I want to talk a little bit about that, Sue. So that, yeah, so, go, go ahead. ahead. Nope. No, I was going to let so, you go. No, so I you, just wanted you guys to see that, you know, you can still use a panel and see, you know, the vent looks really nice when you coordinate it with the handle and then matching hardware. It's a very clean, very finished. I like that. Uh, I like that look uh, with the, with the, uh, venting on top. Yep, and that's the way most of our customers do it. There is in the install guide, we do give dimensions. If they wanted to do a custom wood, it's not easy to do, but it is something that a cabinet maker could do. Um, the main thing is you gotta make sure you have the venting that we require because everything does vent from the top of that one. Correct. Good, all right, so are we to the side-by-side -side next? Is that right, guys? Yes, yeah, so now we, we are in Chicago. And we are looking at the side by side. Um, I like that you can get this in a 42 inch wide and a 48 inch wide, all in the same finish uh, as the bottom freezer and the full freezer, uh, full refrigerator units. This is the one that we have here in Chicago. I loaded the door here filled with bottles just to show you guys how much weight you can put in this door. Um, I let customers really swing that door to give you the idea of how much weight you can put in here. I think, Sue, how, this is one of, you know, when customers come into the showroom, they really gravitate towards this one. Is the this side the best by side? side? Yeah, best so um, between the 42 and the 48, they are um, the, the best sellers, then the bottom freezers would be right after that. Um, hey guys, just so you remember, the freezer is the same. The freezer size is the same on both the 42 and the 48. It's the refrigerator side that's bigger on the 48, just so you guys know. Um, I think I'm about out of time, guys. I think we wanted to go back to Nicole real quick because I want to show you guys the um, all fridge, all freezer together. Beautiful. Jamie, that you did there. Notice that it has a common grill kit, okay? So guys, that is an option. You can do it as a 60, a 66, or a 72. Just know that there is not a common grill if you're putting two bottom freezers together, okay? The 72 inch kit will fit on a all fridge, all freezer, but it will not fit for two bottom freezers because the hinges are different. On and that. so those are, those are installed uh, standard proud of the cabinetry yes. versus the panel ready unit. Yes, it's a it's perfect piece. shot there. Yeah, you can see how that side trim wraps around to cover any cut up that you have there. It's a great piece there. When you order that common grill kit or the one piece grill kit, it will ship with the center trim piece. So when you open up the doors, that gap between them right there, that center piece will ship with the common grill kit, okay? If you were doing a full overlay um, and you were keeping, and you were not you know, doing the common grill kit, that center piece can be ordered as a separate accessory. It is on the price sheet that way. So we've tried to really think through all the different ways you can design, the different ways that might be installed and make sure we covered all of our bases as far as um, that goes. Jamie, anything else we wanna add on design? Cause I think we're out of time. Yeah, I think that we have to keep in mind that we have the Delta Hues, the full collection of brand new colors by Viking. I have a great amount of uh, display in the California showroom featuring some of the new colors. The Delta Hues are beautiful. Customers are very excited about them. And um, I can't wait to see customers install them. It's a very, very exciting time, a colorful time for Viking. 
Exactly. Great. Margaret, I guess we'll turn it back over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending today. Please make sure to catch Chef Jamie and Chef Jackie on the Viking Instagram live feed for an amazing cooking video on Wednesday and Friday evenings. Please also make sure to tune in for next Thursday's training on Viking ventilation on Thursday, June 18th at 3 p.m. Central Time. Look for a follow-up email with assets from today's training as well as Chef Jackie's recipe for summer sangria. As a reminder, too, we are hosting virtual showroom appointments out of our Chicago and Irvine showrooms. Please visit our websites or talk to your Middleby Residential District Sales Manager for more information. This concludes our training for today. We will remain on the call to answer any questions that you may have asked in the chat. Well, either nobody was paying attention or I just did such a great job that nobody had any questions. I'm not sure which is the way it goes. <laughs> you always do a great <laughs> job, Sue. <laughs> and on yeah. that note, I'd just like to thank everyone again. And uh, this concludes the meeting. I'm going to drink some have a great one. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> Bye. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye.